Send Driesla, Wales, January 23, 1974. Late in the evening, this quiet rural village in the Berwyn Mountains is rocked by an enormous explosion. 14-year-old Hugh Lloyd is in his home watching television when he feels the impact and then receives call after call from his neighbors, most claiming to have seen an incredibly bright light falling from the sky and then glowing on the mountainside. Today, Hugh Lloyd still works on his father's ranch in San Trislo. Are you Hugh? Yep. Ancient astronaut theorist Giorgio Tsoukalos and Nick Pope, a former UFO investigator for the British Ministry of Defense, met up with Hugh to get his take on what really happened that night. Can you tell us your experience? Well, I was home with my two sisters and my neighbor, basically watching television, and it was just like a thud. And next thing, the whole place started shaking quite violently. You know, this like was earth tremor. And then we were all a bit stunned. And the phone started ringing. We saw neighbors and things, you know, saying, what the hell was that? Are you OK? You put the phone down, and another neighbor would phone. Your neighbors called you to ask you if you're OK. So they pretty much had similar experiences. Oh, yes, yeah. So you're not the only one? No. And what time of evening was this? It was roughly 20 to 9. So, you know, some people have suggested that, well, it was nothing else but an earthquake, yeah. which I don't subscribe to this idea, but have you had any earthquakes around here? Nothing like that, no. But at the time, they were trying to say that the lights people had seen were people with, what do you call them, lamping, you know, after foxes and But and you rabbits. saw that light, and it was much, much brighter than oh, yeah. people lamping. Yeah. I mean, it was something almost blinding. Well, I've never seen a light like it before, and I've never seen anything like it since. Wow. The community of San Drisla was shaken by the mysterious event, which became known as the Berwyn Mountains Incident. That night, dozens of residents called the region's emergency line to report a bright light followed by a mysterious object seen streaking across the night sky. Curiously, Approximately 30 minutes after the reports were made, a police officer arrived at the home of eyewitness Hugh Lloyd. There was a knock on the door, and there was a police officer there. And he said, there's been a report of a plane crash. And I remember our neighbor saying, oh, he's quite important. He's got pips on his shoulder. Right, so a senior officer, yeah. not, not one of the local... No. Because the police turned up, I just assumed there was a plane crash, you know. A plane crash? For Nick Pope, who worked at the Ministry of Defense and has seen the file on this incident, this is a surprising new detail. The official report only mentions a meteor and nothing about a plane. The theory initially that this was a plane crash and that this police and military operation was a search and rescue or search and yeah. recovery, that's fine. But I mean, you know, we know where our planes are. There is 24 seven radar coverage, civilian aircraft. Even back then. Yeah, absolutely. Planes don't just drop out of the sky. And, and if they do, immediately everyone knows which aircraft it is. So it seems odd. Yes, and I remember the inspector saying, I don't remember the exact word was, I'd like to commandeer your Land Rover, if you can, to take us up there. The officer commandeered the family's truck and drove with Hugh to the crash site. Nick and Giorgio were taken on the exact same journey that was made that night. How high is the mountain? At the very top. About 2,800 feet. You know, one thing that struck me is this is a pretty difficult drive. So you've got to be pretty determined to get a whole bunch of people up here. Yes, and for what purpose? Unless it's really something of importance. Yeah, this, this is not to be no. undertaken lightly, is it? No. According to Hugh, the police inspector directed him to stop at this spot. Although the inspector was allegedly not familiar with the area and seemed to have no reason for doing so. It was at this location that Hugh witnessed an incredibly bright light in the distance. So down there, 
Yeah, ball to the left there. OK. Just over there. There's a little clump of trees to the left of the valley. That's where the lights were. When this light appeared, did it seem to you as if it was an explosion? No. This was definitely very strong white light from the ground. And how long was it shining for? No more than 15 seconds. According to Hugh, the inspector wanted to get a closer look at the mysterious light, but then received a curious command from his superiors. He asked me, can you take the vehicle where the source of light is? So we went back down that way a quarter of a mile and turned left on the track, and then this radio message came and said, come back at the first light. Mm. So it sounds like it was a stand-down call. Yes. That bugs me to the day if they were looking for a crash site. Why, you know, when you were half a mile away from where we wanted to go, that they were called down? Yes. Doesn't make sense. In the days following the incident, Royal Air Force personnel, scientists, journalists, and UFO enthusiasts combed the surrounding land and interviewed locals at length. Curiously, the official explanation for these events provided by the Ministry of Defense did not include either fox hunters or a plane crash, as was told to Hugh that night. 